concept that I think, uh, especially in the recent months, has become very prevalent in all our institutions. I would really uh, welcome you to uh, ask questions, so please feel free to put those in the chat. I'll keep my eye on it, and as they pop up and I can address them through the session, I will do that. Otherwise, we will also have an opportunity at the end of the session to discuss some of your questions. Uh, comments, also welcome. Please just put up your hand and I'll bring you into the session. We are not too many people. We can definitely do that. I've also seen some familiar names in the audience. It's wonderful to see some old colleagues. Uh, previously, I worked at Stellenbosch University, and it's from this perspective that I also want to share a little bit with you about my own experiences with internationalization at home and uh, look at what can we do. So a brief overview, three things to touch on. What is internationalization at home? Why is it important? And how can we actually do this very sometimes overwhelming concept within internationalization of internationalization at home. So let me start with the what is it? Some of you already have an idea, <clears throat> and if you want to put in some ideas that you have on what you view as internationalization at home, please feel free to put that in our chat. So when we think of internationalization at home, it is really a very broad topic. Uh, and for many times, and also in my own research, I've looked at how do we narrow that down, how we make that tangible within our institutions. Initially, we worked with a very wide concept stating that any internationally related activity with the exception of outbound student and staff mobility. So anything that you could conceptualize or categorize under uh, internationalization that was not linked to the mobility of students and staff, so that leaving of the country. But as we've gone along, we've also thought about this more, and many scholars have written about this. I have shared at the end of this presentation some of the resources and one of the articles and something that really also informed my thinking around today's session were, was an article by Jos Bieren and Elspeth Jones, for which I've put the link at the end. And as we think about what is internationalization at home, we have derived and our colleagues have derived at a definition to say that it's purposeful integration of international and intercultural dimensions into the formal and informal curriculum for all students within domestic learning environments. And I think this gives us yet a broad framework, but also really gives us some guidance in how as practitioners we can bring internationalization at home to our institutions. In the definition, you see two components, and I like to think of this as two approaches, but two approaches that complement one another. And on the one side, you have internationalization at home in the formal curriculum within programs. Uh, you might also argue, and some do argue, that internationalization at home in the curriculum can be seen as internationalization of the curriculum. But as you will also read in this article by Bielen and Jones, is that Internationalization of the curriculum can also include mobility, the typical student exchanges that many of us have worked with before. But what is important is that internationalization at home within the formal curriculum is not coincidental. It is planned, it forms part of the teaching and learning, and it is linked to the learning outcomes. If we think of the informal curriculum, and I think all of us would know that uh, learning outcomes are not only reached within the classroom, and all of those activities that institutions put together for their students can also be then linked to internationalization at home through the informal curriculum. I'll share some of my own experiences at Stellenbosch University in, in the kind of things that we've done um, and also where I'm involved in now in NISA South Africa. But this includes all elements of the student experience. What the students do out of the classroom, uh, their exposure through, for example, student organizations, um, but it all contributes to the type of student what we wish to deliver as um, knowledge institutions. Some important views on internationalization that I would like to share with you is that the internationalization at home should not be viewed as an optional extra. So it is really a purposeful inclusion. So if at your institution you have an elective, for including this in a program. 
I would say consider how can you make that uh, more accessible and I'll get to why this is so important uh, and why I stress this so much. We've also seen and I think now more than ever we have all been exposed to technology based initiatives and where this has previously been quite challenging and where very often this has been taken um, out of our consideration in what we can do. This is now at the forefront. A part of that includes a virtual exchange. It can include a virtual internship. Uh, earlier in the week, I also hosted a session on virtual internships and you can get that presentation if you have an interest in how to put together a virtual internship and what to consider. But it could also include collaborative online international learning. And this concept in itself is something that has gained in the context of South Africa much relevance, not only during COVID where we are forced to stay at our homes, but also as a specific methodology where we can expose students to the principles and dimensions of internationalization. It is also not dependent on the presence of international students. Um, for example, at Stellenbosch University, uh, we hosted an, a, a body system where we included South African uh, and international students in the same program. And that worked because we had the students on campus. It's an institution with a, a very broad based international group, more than 3000 international students from 140 countries. But it is not dependent that that is the only way that we can use it. And if we look at how we can do it, technology is one way to do it, but we should also be weary of the fact that technology based initiatives is not the only way to promote internationalization at home. And I'll share some ideas that I have on how you can make this tangible when we look at um, the really how do we do this. Then the why. Why is this important? And I think for me most prominently is that for many of us and also for myself that have worked in international education for many years, mobility has always been the core of internationalization, the mobility of students, the mobility of staff. Yet we know that mobility is only for a few. And so internationalization at home really puts the focus on the students and put that at the core of internationalization. So really internationalization for all. It's not only for a select few students. And this was something if I look at my experience within South African higher education, there are very few institutions within South Africa that has the financial means to send all students on an international experience. It is something though that is very important also for our National Research Foundation, yet the resources remain um, challenging. We do know that this can be a way to create uh, specific skills and international skills that we require also for a global workforce. And that's why when we look at internationalization, it's really a way to say we can make this accessible to all. In my view, it's also a very valuable tool in building partnerships and building partnerships in the very broad sense of it. It's building partnerships within an institution because internationalization at home is not dependent only on an international office. It really needs the collaboration from the academic point of view, from your uh, international office, from if you are doing a technology based initiative, from your technical department, um, and really to see how you can utilize the strengths in your institution to put such a program together. It's also an opportunity to work within your city or your region. Uh, from a South Af African perspective, the uh, ability and the skill set that is linked to understanding the region that we are in, region, continent, um, is very important for the agenda of the, of the continent. And therefore really thinking of interventions where we use our local communities and the region is quite important in building our partnerships. And again, internationalization at home can be at the core of that. In our virtual internship session, we discussed this as well, but it's also a way to uh, collaborate with international companies. What we've seen through COVID is most certainly that the, the future is online. Uh, and that also pertains to the future of work in that we've all seen now by being forced to do so, it is possible to work remotely. It comes without with challenges. Nothing is without challenges, but this is a way to expose students 
to a, a global way of working and remotely working, and you can build that into your partnerships. And then, of course, it's a way to engage your institutional, par um, institutional international partners. And one of the examples that I would like to share with you, um, and I've put uh, a slide at the end of this presentation that you can also join. Um, in South Africa, there's a European Union program called ICUDU, where also Dutch institutions are taking part. And it is on COIL and virtual exchanges, where you can also see how institutions are working together um, in the field of internationalization at home. So all of this is wonderful. We've created an idea. We know why this is so important. But now, how do we actually do this? And in broad sense, we can really use two big resources. We can work from our local point of view and we can include, include the global. And I, I want to share some activity ideas with before uh, I hand over to you and hear some of your experiences. And three ideas that I would like to share with you is that you can use a language experience. And this can be done both from online or from a local perspective. So for example, if you do have international students um, on your campus, you can include tandem language experiences with your international students. Uh, we even do that in our own office. We have an intern, uh, one Dutch intern and one South African intern. Um, and our South African intern uh, teaches our Dutch intern some Zulu and Twana. It just depends on which languages we have in the country. Uh, but we even use that in the office as a way of creating understanding and contributing to intercultural competence. You can also do this online. I have an online language buddy that helps me with my Portuguese. So this is another way where you can very directly link the outcomes of uh, international competence with a technology based initiative. And then if you look work a little bit closer, but outside of your institution, you can also work with local native speakers. Uh, and you are in a fortunate position where you have many, depending on where you are located, but yet you have many native speakers around you that you can involve in the institution to contribute to these learning outcomes. Then the story circle. Uh, I don't know, some of you might be familiar with the story circle and I would be very curious to hear those experiences, but UNESCO has developed a model uh, for intercultural competence that's based on the methodology of story circles. You can do it either virtually. We recently did one with Enufic where we shared uh, in a story circle about our own experiences and that can be done virtually. Or uh, as this example on the picture is showing, you can also uh, use it as a face to face, of course, social distancing given current circumstances. But again, it's a way to connect the university or the institution with the local community. And then if we look a little bit more project based, really looking at how can you work with local cultural communities uh, in the vicinity of your institution and learning from them. It can also be, be a blended model. So why do I refer to this as a blending, blended model? Is that you might find significant differences between, um, let's say, a local South African group that is based in the Netherlands or South Africans when they are in country. And it could be very interesting and a very rich learning experience for students to understand how culture And then, as I've already mentioned to you, looking a little bit at how do we relate to international companies and how can we share uh, with our local companies and prepare our students for the world of work. So I would like to now engage with all of you. I don't see any faces. I just see my own. So I would love for, to bring you into the conversation. And I would like to ask you if you can please share some of the challenges that you have encountered with internationalization at home. So anybody that has tried to do something that has struggled or that want to do something, but something's holding you back, would you be willing to share some of those challenges for all of us in this session to learn from? If you want to put up your hand, you're very welcome. And if you have had only great experiences, then I would like to hear from that. And I'm sure the rest of the group would also like to hear about your experience on developing internationalization at home at your institution. 
Anybody? Okay, I'll give you a moment to think and then I'll share an experience that we have here um, as NISO South Africa uh, in engaging with a project through the Dutch Embassy where we have partnered with institutions in the Western Cape to do it started as a physical project, but we were then challenged with the fact that we could not do the follow up event um, in the Netherlands as we had planned. And we have now worked with the institutions involved to link this to some of their learning outcomes. Uh, so we are now doing an online project on entrepreneurship development in three thematic areas in the water sector, in transport and logistics and in agriculture, all three very important areas for South Africa, but also very important for the trade agenda between South Africa and the Netherlands. And they are now working on how can they develop ideas around solving urban challenges of Cape Town through this. For the South African students, they've never been to the Netherlands. All those students that are taking part, they have never been to the Netherlands. Some of the challenges that we've incurred so far is timing. So even though there's only one hour time difference between South Africa and the Netherlands, it is still quite a challenge on how to actually get the students when they have com competing agendas to make time for this. And that is why it's so important that you make sure that these interventions are closely linked to the students teaching programs. We have also seen that on the South African side, there is a challenge with accessing various platforms. Anything that is heavily data, um, data driven can be a challenge for South African students. And therefore, that has one of been one of the things that we had to consider within the budget to make provision for. And of course, this is something for you when you engage in this to be considerate of what what needs to be allocated within your resources when the context are so vastly different. Uh, we hope that this project will be a big success. Uh, we are heading towards the end and so far so good. And if this model works, this will actually become a cornerstone of our living lab on resilient cities that we have um, done in collaboration with the Dutch Embassy. I have included some resources for you in this session. One is the article that I referred to before. A couple of challenges. OK, great. Uh, Jessica, you're very welcome to unmute yourself and share this. But you sure. touch on a very important aspect, and that's that this is an extra. So I would like you to let's explore that a little bit. Tell us a bit about your experience. Yeah. So first of all, uh, hello. Uh, I know I'm also a black spot on the screen. I'm Jessica Shinnick from uh, Rotterdam, uh, University of Applied Sciences. Um, yeah, I think that that uh, within our context, we have some programs that are working, uh, let's say, uh, in international programs. Our business school is international with international students. So for them, well, this is sort of a normal thing. But for many others that are that are Dutch language programs. Uh, lecturers and also the managers often think that internationalization in general is an extra and it's not something that is necessarily important for their curriculum and um, and still are focusing on uh, mobility as their primary frame of reference and thinking about what internationalization is. So I think being able to and we've been working within our organization to um, try to help programs understand what are we talking about with internationalization and with especially a focus on internationalization at home um, and identifying the possibilities of that but also the necessity for that and as you said in the beginning identifying how it should be integrated into the learning outcomes and how it should always contribute to learning objectives um, and how actually it can be done sometimes in simple ways that that they don't think about so that that's been we are one of our big experiences in Rotterdam. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you very much for sharing that, Jessica. I think that is so very true that uh, mobility is seen as the only method to achieve these international and intercultural competencies that we seek. Uh, and when you analyze and review your learning outcomes, you will see that it's actually entrenched there in many cases. 
And then if you only have mobility as an opportunity, then you narrow down the number of students that can take part. Because I can, can I am pretty sure that uh, no institution has the resources to send all of their students abroad. So really, uh, I wish you luck. I would really like to hear your stories on how this develops to see how when you work from the planned and the learning outcomes, you can actually find ways to include this for all students. And you are so um, ideally based in Rotterdam with so many cultural groups around you that can support you in this process. Other comments, other burning questions. I have also left you here with the um, methodology for the story circles that you can use. It's a fairly easy uh, methodology to adapt um, and to see how we can actually um, use this as a, a method within the classroom as well. I see more questions. The main challenge with internationalization at home is engaging and interesting the local professors. True. Um, actually, Ekaterina, don't you want to talk about... OK, she says, wait, my mic is not working. OK, mic is stuck, so she can't speak. She says that quite often they are not eager to change their way of working to integrate foreign students or international dimensions. Yes, very familiar with that. Um, one of the ways that have suggested and which um, I have used as well, actually also with Dutch institutions, is to create mobility opportunities and international opportunities for staff and to let them experience what it is to gain that uh, period abroad and gain that international knowledge and see how they bring it back to their classroom. Unfortunately, there's not enough research on that yet to, to, to really say this is the way to do it. But at least on an anecdotal level, I have seen the advantages of giving uh, local academics or local staff, also in support staff, because as I said before, you really need the academic and the support staff to make this wor work and make this run as a golden thread throughout your institution and programs, but to give them that international experience and to work with your partners to support you in that. Um, and sometimes the bit of exposure just ignites to say, well, this is something that I want to bring back to my classroom. If anybody else has examples of what they've done to. Yurian, I see you are unmuted. If you want to say something. Yeah, yeah, I was actually typing, but this is easier. If no, I may. please go ahead. Um, yes. Yeah, we work with international students, mainly from uh, Asia. I work for on campus Amsterdam, a pathway provider partner from uh, of the University of Amsterdam. Uh, we always offer Dutch language course, uh, some excursions in Amsterdam. And um, yeah, what we, we struggle with this year is that uh, the students who are still back home, they are they seem less eag less eager and less interested in internationalization uh, because yeah, they don't really need it. You know, bottom line is they, they have limited time. They're very pragmatic. They they think, how can I pro, uh, progress to the University of Amsterdam? Which grades do I need? And anything on top of that, like Dutch class or excursions, and especially when, when they're not even in Amsterdam, uh, yeah, seems like sometimes, you know, something extra that they don't want to uh, spend any time on. So so that that's what I struggle with a little bit to engage them. Yeah. In, I think it's really it, it's so real when you take away that excitement that goes along with the mobility, mm -hmm. uh, then for many students it becomes far removed and it's less interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say, when it's then on top of other demanding uh, programs, students are really um, difficult to get involved. Mm -hmm. I think what we've seen with program is that there's a group of students that remain interested and we try to work with that energy but really to see how do we bring it back with what is the value add for them to do this what what am i losing out if i don't do this mm -hmm. uh, and for south africans aspects such as employability is quite important for them to understand what is the value when i leave university for mm -hmm. this yes i might not need it now for my program but one day i'm going to apply for a job and this can one, uh, contribute to my network and two, distinguish me from other students. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, we, we do mention indeed if they want to look for an internship or a job in the Netherlands, uh, uh, yeah, learning basic Dutch will make them stand out from the other international students. So that's a good point. And I think, yeah, perhaps we also have to integrate it a little bit more in the curriculum. Once we, yeah. we had that with English class that uh, we formed little groups and they uh, from and they had to explore the city together. Uh, and then you can really, you know, they, they, they see how how different they are from each other and they can also experience uh, how things work in the Netherlands. And that's a really useful way to improve their English, but also to gain something from it uh, in other uh, respects. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I really value all your input. I have added the webinar that I mentioned earlier, I, I could do where you can get an idea of how this project has developed in South Africa. Um, it also includes Dutch institutions. It's an EU funded capacity development program, and it has really shifted a lot of thinking around internationalization at home versus mobility um, in the country. And so please feel free to join the session if you have time. Um, it will be a webinar and you'll find it there. We will also share this presentation with you afterwards. So please feel free to use it as a resource. As I said, uh, many of this comes from Jos Bielen's work. Uh, and if you have an interest and you want to work with South African universities on internationalization at home through virtual uh, ways, please feel free to reach out.